For our final video, let's consider two functions that have irritating work involved in them to find the surface area, and also an application problem. The first one, compute the surface area of revolution about the x-axis over the given interval. We're going to do y equals e of negative x from 0 to 1, using the box formula for surface area. Now the reason why this problem becomes so tedious is we know how to find the derivative, negative e to negative x. But it's the squaring and the adding one and the plugging into the formula that makes it a little difficult to evaluate. We're going to need to use trigonometric substitution. Now right away, you should be thinking, well, I have a 1 plus a quantity squared under the square root, and I'm not going to be able to um to factor it or to do something like before where the square and the square root will disappear. So that's a perfect opportunity for you to use the tangent function, tangent theta. Remember with when there's a plus we want to use tangent. So we're gonna let e to the negative x be tangent theta and if we differentiate both sides we'll get negative e to negative x dx equals secant squared theta d theta. Once we establish our substitution, we can transform our integrand instead of e to the negative x square root 1 plus e to the negative 2x, that's from squaring the uh, e to the negative x. We can transform it into the antiderivative of negative secant cubed theta d theta. Now where did this come from? You might ask, well, we already have a secant squared theta coming from this term, and a negative for that matter. On this term, we have 1 plus tangent squared theta after the substitution under the radical. And if you simplify 1 plus tangent squared theta under the radical, that's going to produce by identity just the secant theta. So that's where the cube's coming from. There's a single secant coming from here, and there's a secant squared coming from here. Okay? So our function is negative secant cube theta, d theta, which we proved in an earlier lecture back in the end of June, that this is the antiderivative of secant cube theta. We can write it as a fact. We don't need to re-go through all the steps to get it. Okay? So now let's actually go through the motions and calculate the um, surface. Before we can do the calculations though, we have our antiderivative in terms of theta. So we want to go back and change that to be entirely in terms of x. So to that end, we need to make a right triangle that has these relationships over here, e to the negative x over 1 equals tangent theta. That's how we design our trig substitution, so we need to just illustrate it. Our nifty right triangle down on the bottom right corner, I placed theta here strategically so that the tangent ratio opposite over adjacent was e to the negative x over 1. That was my substitution. And then over here, I have um, I squared each of the sides and I added them together. Took the square root for the Pythagorean theorem. So I am now able to take everything I got here from the antiderivative and I can replace them with functions of x based on this picture. I'm just going to take the other part and change them all to functions of x. And I'll erase that so you can see it. All right, so here's our antiderivative entirely in terms of x after making substitutions with the triangle. Lastly, we take our antiderivative and we plug in our bounds and apply also the 2 pi into the um, into the antiderivative. So here's the surface area. Notice that we we never did the 2 pi. So that gets distributed here, it gets distributed here, and we don't need to see anymore because we have bounds. 
That's why the negative halves are now negative pi as I multiplied by 2 pi. And then I'm just going to plug in 1 and I'm going to plug in 0. All the work for that is listed here in this step. And you can feel free to stop here at the start step. Or if you prefer, if you want to condense the logarithms, you can do that as well. But it's not a requirement. Alright, notice we have um, pi times a natural log minus pi times another natural log. So these two are just put together as a, um, a log of a quotient because I have um, same base of E and I can just write it instead of a fraction problem as a subtraction top over bottom. So here's your final answer. Okay. Our next example, 1 fourth x squared minus 1 half ln x from 1 to e. This one's not as terrible. We're not going to have um, a crazy substitution like in the last example, just a bunch of painful terms. So as we've been doing, we're going to take the derivative of the function first using the power rule. Looks similar to what we did before for, um, for arc length. And the derivative is 1 half x or x over 2 minus 1 over 2x. We'll take it and square it and add 1. And again, this result should look familiar from before. We had this um, exact same problem. And we noted how the minus, after we foiled it and added the 1, ended up refactoring to have a positive, which works to our advantage. We go back, and once we um, have that, we'll plug it into our surface area formula, which I'll just uh, cut and paste for reference as we're doing the problem. Alright, so now I'm going to take I'm going to take this expression. That's going to get replaced. That's going to replace all this stuff in here under the square root. And notice how very conveniently the square root and the square will cancel each other out. That's how I arrive at this term. F of x itself. That's over here. That's where that term came from. And then we have our 2 pi and our bounds. It becomes necessary at this point to um, expand this using foiling. So you do the first terms, x squared over 4 times x over 2. That's where this term came from. x squared over 4 times 1 over 2x. That's going to be where this term comes from. And then you'll do the, um, the inner and the last. That's where these two terms will come from. After doing that, We integrate each term, x to the third over 8 is x to the fourth over 32, x over 8, x squared over 16. Which method will allow us to integrate x ln x over 4? Since I have a product of x and ln x, a regular u substitution won't cut it. Instead, we need to use um, integration by parts. I'd like you to try, while you're watching this video, Try using integration by parts. Making your u ln x. Try using integration by parts to show that this function's antiderivative is listed over here. Don't forget the negative that goes along with it too. So just verify that. And then this function here, we can do using a simple u substitution. You can kind of see here's the u, and the du is 1 over x dx. So it's already set up 1 fourth u du. You can just find the antiderivative um, backwards. It'll be u squared over 8, plug the u back in. That's how we get this term right here. So once we integrate, we can plug everything in. And at, at that point, it just becomes careful record keeping. Plug all the e's in. Total of four times: one e, two e, three e, four e. Actually, five times. Five terms. Plug in the e five times, and then plug in the one five times as well. Noting that the natural log is one. That's where these two zeros came from. And then 
just add up as many light turns as you possibly can. And you, again, you could feel free to stop here. You know, as far as you can go, simplifying would be great. Or pi over 16 times e to the fourth minus 9. Our final problem is a cool problem about a torus. So we're going to rotate the circle x squared plus y minus b squared equals a squared about the x axis. Note that the circle is right over here. Picture it in 3D. The center is at 0, comma b, hence x squared and y minus b squared. And the radius of the circle is a, not r as shown on the paper. Let's just change that to a. It goes up a units and it goes down a units, right a units, left a units. We want to find the total surface area. In order to do that, we need to solve our equation of the circle here for y to get a function in terms of x. Okay? So, if you'd like to work that out, that would be great. So, try the x squared. Take the square root. You're going to get plus or minus again because of the square. y equals b plus the square root of a squared minus x squared will give us the top half of the circle. And chaining the sign in between to minus will give us the bottom half. In each case, if you square the derivative and add 1 to it, In each case, if you square the derivative and add 1 to it, you will get a squared over a squared minus x squared. And that's coming from the same steps we used before with this type of function. I believe it was the sphere. To find the derivative, you use the chain rule. Drop the half, keep the inside, decrease it by 1. We got something very similar to this before. Okay, so just flip back to the example on the sphere if we help find the derivative on this function. But in both cases, Here's the 1 plus the derivative squared. Next, since we're rotating two halves of the circles around the x-axis, we're going to do two integrals, each from negative a to a, 1 with the plus, 1 with the minus. So note we're using the surface area formula again with the original function itself in both cases. And this square derivative is plus 1 again in both cases. Each of them goes from negative a to a. We have a top part here and a bottom part here. Don't forget the two pi's in front. We're going to find the top surface area and the bottom surface area and add them up. Note that we can combine it into one integral if we distribute the a over square root term to each term backwards, then the square root part here, there's a positive part of it here, and there's a negative part of it here. They will cancel each other out. You have a b going over here, and a b going over here. That's 2b. a over square root a squared minus x squared. So we're distributing, adding um, the like terms together. And we get it down to a very simple integral, as shown here. We'll even go as far as to pull out the non-x terms. That's where this 4 pi b a is coming from. And now we have to find the integral shown here, which should look very familiar to you. This can be integrated using inverse trig. Its antiderivative is inverse sine x over a. That's when we have the number squared minus the variable squared. Take the variable. Put over the number square root and um, just plug in a and negative a. And you're taking the inverse sine of 1 and negative 1, which happens at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, respectively. And you get a final answer of 4 pi squared b a. That's all of our examples. I hope you have all the notes filled in. I'll be happy to answer any questions when we meet in lecture. In the meantime, check over the textbook examples and try the suggested homework problems for this section. Thank you.